need to figure out where I'm going to put my hands. Here we go. All right, everyone. Welcome to the second live stream of the Crazy Crafter. Is that? Oh yeah, it is. Oh yeah, we should be. We are. We are rocking and rolling. Oh yeah. Cool. All right. I like had to do the quick test to see if it looks good because our video last week was was a little like tiny tiny viewing space and uh, um, uh, I was I did I wanted to make sure we got a little bit bigger picture but we're 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 set up and we're walking rocking and rolling cool uh, I'm Colin Bressy welcome back to the Crazy Crafter second week of the live stream uh, got an awesome guest in in house with us here today I uh, got Michael Patterson from Nat One Videos welcome Michael. Thanks very much for having me, man. Oh yeah, man. Thanks for joining. Um, Michael is uh, a, a f another uh, fellow YouTube uh, content creator in uh, in the tabletop terrain crafting world. More than that, uh, and I'll let him describe it. But um, we connected a couple weeks ago now, and um, have kind of forged this new friendship from across the pond, and. Uh, I'm really enjoying uh, all of all of his new content that he's creating. We got to put his his uh, his links links up uh, so you can access his channel uh, as well. Uh, it should be in our description below for this this week's live stream. But you got to check him out. Um, he's he's got some amazing amazing stuff uh, up up on the channel, and I'm, it's really been an inspiration for me. Uh, and um, it's cool, it's you. yeah it's it's great having you. Jammy Jam's in here. Hey Jammy Jam. Look at, uh, See if I can type here as well. Jammy Jam. Welcome. Cool. Well, tell us a little bit about, about yourself, Michael, and uh, and the channel. Uh, well, I mean, it's a very new channel, uh, obviously. Yep. So I've been doing it since it kind of came maybe three or four weeks into lockdown, uh, whenever that started over here in London. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting, getting frustrated with wanting to do something. I mean, I've tried a few YouTube channels before. Yep. Um, I, I did a kids YouTube channel with puppets and silly voices and uh, I've actually done a I kind of still run a sort of martial arts YouTube channel as well Roger Gracie Academy one that's where I uh, train Jiu Jitsu so I've done that one as well so I've done a few things before but they were all kind of it wasn't necessarily content that I was personally really wanting to make I was kind of making it with a view for someone else kind of thing yep uh, with the kids one, it's like I'm constantly thinking, what do, would kids want to look at? What would they want to enjoy? As opposed to just make content of something that I really enjoy myself. And so, yeah, and then playing through playing D&D &D, uh, with my wife, uh, Blue Cat, who has just said hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and, and our group. While we were playing our games on Roll20, I just got back into drawing again. I hadn't been doing creative projects or things for a long, long time, many years. I put it, I just put it to one side and focused on other things hmm. and just got back into drawing again. I decided to post a video up on YouTube. I called it Nat One Videos because I wasn't expecting it to be a Nat 20 of inspiration <laughs> or anything like that. Uh, just, and it, doesn't, it, mean, it means I'm not under any pressure. That one is is the level I'm aiming for. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I started putting videos up just there, and yeah. Uh, then I'm now kind of just the more I do it, the more I'm enjoying it, and I'm just enjoying being creative again. Like, so it doesn't matter if it's drawing or right. I got into carving over the summer as well, and then that's led into carving things for out of XPS foam for D and D games. So yeah, it's it's been really fun. So it's all very new and exciting but yeah I'm really enjoying it awesome i think yeah I, I can totally relate um to to you know the ability to create again yeah that's that's definitely it's it's been it's been nice to you know because we're you know the hobby's there and it's nice to do the hobby but you know figuring out how to do a youtube channel um figuring out how to um, <laughs> figure out live stream and all, all this is definitely, it's, it's another, again, all creative outlet and the creative challenge for, 
for myself. So I'm I'm extremely extremely happy that you reached out and that you uh, we that we connected because here yeah, we are now that. and here we are in a live stream where you're going to be. You just posted a video this week, uh, a tutorial okay. up on the very project and the craft that we're going to do today. You want to tell us a little bit about what uh, what we're doing today? What are we working on? Okay, so today we're going to look at. This I'll probably try and put it up to this uh, to the camera here. Yeah, that's perfect, uh, right there. So this is uh, my take on for tabletop gaming, um, a dwarven pillar. So say you go into like a, the mind lost lost mines of Fandelver, or if you know a Lord of the Rings fan, sort of mines of Moriah kind of thing. <laughs> um, this uh, was just a little bit of a brainwave. I've been ca uh, carving this space out of twigs and wood all summer whenever mm -hmm. I was camping um, back in Ireland and just practicing it and i got gotten good at it and it gotten it to the point where I have a system of cuts that works really easily and I think it's really easy for people to follow as well um, and so I don't, I don't think you need to be very experienced you just need to have steady hands and a bit of concentration to do it and I just into the uh, the tabletop crafters uh, guild, just seeing what everyone else is doing and just realizing, oh, that's maybe something I can contribute. Um, and I made this one. I, I actually made this off the back of a conversation with you. Mm. Um, you you were like, oh, maybe you could come and join the stream sometime. What would you make? And I was just like, well, I'd have to make something that was relevant. And then this just literally came out and mm. then I posted it into the, the crafters guild and everyone loved it. So. Yeah, everyone loved it. It's, it's, yeah, did, yeah. it's so wild. Really it's, cool. it's a piece. It's like a, a really, you know, a small pieces of scattered terrain like that, that really add a whole, a whole new dimension to the game and to the experience. And that, uh, that pillar is amazing. Like there's so much, I don't know. There's so much character in those pillars and like, I want to know. I want to know the backstory of them. Like, who carved them? Like, what are they there? And they just they add they add a, a, a an extremely um, just I don't know. It's just another another element to immerse immerse uh, your players in in the uh, in the experience in the role playing experience. So they look yeah, amazing. Well, I mean, since I've done them, uh, I know in my mind because like I have DM'd a few games, but all on the internet. So. Um, uh, I worked on a map, uh, so one of the videos on my channel is that I painted a D and D map for a game that I ran for my ne nephews and nieces back in Ireland. Yeah, we 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 ran a game. Uh, it was a live rolling game, and it was just really really fun. The map was cool, and now it's just like okay, into this whole world of terrain building. I'm just been watching Black Magic Craft yep. and Tabletop Magic, or you know all of these guys, uh, Wylock, you know, and. Just all of those techniques that I know just from having been arty, arty and creative over the years that I can pick this up really quickly. Um, so now I'm planning to build so much stuff uh, for, for a game that once I can get all of my players together in the same room at the same time, I just plan to have this awesome tabletop yep. game. Everything is laid out. They, they'll have little characters. It's just going to be so so much fun. I, I can't wait. That's the same. Like I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm like <laughs> when we get back. I'm hoping to continue building a bunch of stuff, and then at some point I'm going to do like a photo inventory of all the stuff that I built, and then I want to dump it on like um, a Google Drive, and then the um, uh, then have access so like the DM or whoever's running the game that night can like be like, hey, can you pull these or make sure these pieces are pulled and ready for you because those are big. Um, uh, let's see, haha, <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, someone on here is like, uh, BEC saying, hey Mike, these types of designs would make an amazing chess set. You actually mentioned that, we, I heard you talking about that the other day, or was that, yeah. that might have been in the, um, the live, uh, when you premiered it la this week, it might have been a, a comment or a thread in the chat, uh, as it was happening. Well, I've actually that's now the third person that said the same thing, and actually it is it would make a cool chess set. Yeah. So these are, would would obviously be your castles, you know. And um, I've done a few carves of other things over the summer, and like a little horse for your knights would be qu 
quite easy. Mm. Um, so yeah, that might happen at some point. It would be a big chess set if I was to do it this way. Like the reason this is a nice size to carve. Um, it's not too small. Like the, the smaller you get, the details start to kind of fade away a little bit. Yeah. Whereas this is a nice size where you can keep all of the, the detail intact. But yeah, I'd say eventually a chess set is on the cards. Uh, cards. But that's uh, how many pieces are we talking about with the pawns and everything? That's going to take a long time. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, that's a little but, bit of a, a little bit of a journey on that one. Um, yeah, it will but that would be that'd be that'd be a cool long term. Pro- I th- you know, and then you. But the cool thing I'm thinking about the chess set. <laughs> there's still things that you can put on the tabletop for for terrain. Like those will still oh, 100%. those will still look amazing. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool. Well, uh, I so real quick to sh- <laughs> so when when we decided we were gonna do this, I was like, I'm not gonna practice. I'm just gonna show up and. Do the build, I, and then I, I always practice first. And then I was just like, I don't want to cut my hand off in the middle of the live stream, well, so I want to practice because I've never. It's something I'm always fascinated um, as as a uh, hobby fanatic for for the tabletop terrain. I'm excited about new texture, and something I'd never done before is carve and carve in the new texture. Um, so it's it's a big, big. Uh, it was a big, big uh, uh, moment of excitement for me when I was like, "Oh, I gotta try this," and I was excited to have you on and show us all how to do this. But then I was like, "I gotta practice," so I did, and I, I practice. This is well. This is this is prototype one, which I'm still gonna paint. I think it looks cool. I'll show it up here. I showed it there. But this was the prototype. It can was you put, it, put it right up to the camera for can me. Can you see it? There he is. Yeah. It's and I used I used the the flat and you were like that's they were like turn it to the corner and I was just like oh yeah like a little bit easier to carve and then this was the second one I corner for the nose. Yeah, the corner for the nose was the big one that you gave me and then here we go. I came up yep, with already. I mean like the the the, the... In the in the space of two cars, you've basically improved dramatically. Does it, you you can see that. Well, the instruction that you gave for it, like uh, he, <laughs> it was one night. I was I was ed- I was finishing up a build for my uh, one of my one of my episodes, and I sent it to you, and you were like, "Oh, cool." You're like, "Do you want some feedback?" And I was like, "Please, dear Lord, help me out." So, um, you sent back, and you sent me like these little like four or five videos, and they were quick, like maybe five or six seconds each, and it was like, like immediately, I was like, "Oh man, this is." This is this is perfect. Uh, so uh, I'm hoping. Go ahead, brother. Well, no, no. I was, I was just going to say that is the thing that like, I think I mentioned just five minutes ago or something is that uh, over practicing this face quite a few times over the summer, I I, I literally mm-hmm. rather than coming at it from different angles every time, I've kind of figured out a system of cuts. Yep. And if you just follow that system, like it's not hard to to, to make a cut. I think anyone can do it. Like, I honestly don't think that you have to be massively, you just have to be careful with what yeah. you're doing, which is probably a good point is that like, just to mention that like these knives are really sharp and yeah. What are you using today? Show us what you're using. What are you carving with there? Okay. So I've got one of these, which is actually a, a wood carving knife. Mm-hmm. So my, my first carving that I ever did was on a longer, uh, had a longer blade it was about three or four inches long. Yeah. But it was just way too cumbersome, and you, you can't get the detail. Whereas this uh, is perfect for it. So I was whittling wood, but it's even better for wood whittling XPS foam. Mm. So now I, I would say it's not far off an exacto blade size. Right. So, and it, like if you can if you don't have one of these, an exacto blade is perfect. Right. And you know, I didn't have wood carving tools. And I was just like, I was, I was this close to pulling the trigger to buying a new toy for the for the craft and for the hobby. But then I was just like, no, I wanna, I wanna challenge myself with, um, with just the Ulfa knife. So this is what I've, this is what I've been working with. I also have my Exacto knife as well, right? These yeah. are the two things. Uh, I switch the blades out every time I've carved with it, so they are sharp, so it's clean cuts. 
But yeah, yeah, for sure. I think you know the 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 point of safety. If you guys are going to planning on joining us today, and you are planning on carving and whatever you're carving with, just make sure you're you go slow and you take ease and care because it is something. It is a patient. Uh, it is a patient, an, an exercise in patience with with this, and taking your time with it is is you know uh, something that's always important. I remember uh, what's what's the the wood carving channel I've subscribed to, but I keep forgetting his name that you really like. Doug Linker. Doug Linker, yeah. Even Doug's like I've sliced my hand terribly, and like he's been doing how many how many carves? It's easy to do. So if you if you end up carving today or whenever you decide to pick up some XPS and carve, be careful. <laughs> Be careful. Yeah. So. But, I mean, I guess while while we're carving, we can just carry on chatting about all of the nerdy stuff that we've been chatting about as well. Oh yeah, I love it. I love it. So, like, the, I mean, I guess if anyone is interested in like an in depth like step by step, the 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 tutorial is yes. there. But, I mean, if anyone's got a question, they can ask it for sure. Like, yeah, if if you've got questions about this process as we're going along, hit us up. But we'll make sure that we put. Uh, I'm. If the link isn't in the description, I'll make sure it is uh, before I post this uh, this uh, recording onto my channel, so you guys can check out the, both both his channel and the tutorial because the tutorial is a really really great step by step tutorial um, that'll that'll help you out as well. Cool. Thank you very much. Well, what's the what what what's the um uh what do you want? How you've glued them together, right? You've got two pieces, oh, yes. right? So, yeah. Two, so basically, I've got. Uh, uh, 20 millimeters thick XPS foam is what I've got. Mm -hmm. That's what I could. What's, that's what I could buy. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so basically, this is 40 millimeters thick all the way around. I've just hot glued them together, and it's five inches tall, just over five inches tall, five inches and a couple of millimeters. So, um, uh, yeah. Are you able to put? Is your mic real? Is your? Are you able to put the mic a little closer to your face, there, brother? Yeah, I can. Yeah. There you go. How's, how's that? Is oh, that any better? There it is. Everyone, everyone's gonna be like, "There it is." Ooh. You can hear me now. Yeah, I think everyone's gonna be that. It sounds better on mine, so I know it'll sound better for them, for them too. Okay, cool. So, I mean, I mean, I like. I'm, I'm just gonna start carving. Yeah. And carve. You can just start carving and, and and not necessarily talk about what I'm doing as I'm going, but um, because the tutorial is there. Okay. Um, but I guess what I would say as I'm doing this is um, I'm not actually wearing gloves right now because there's certain cuts here that I'm very confident with. But at some point, I might just switch to putting my gloves on. Right. Uh, to not cut my fingers off. I, I, I spent quite a lot of time sharpening my knife this afternoon. Mm hmm So it's probably sharper than it's been all summer. Which is good. I'm gonna pull up. I have it on mute, but I'm looking at your the, those little videos you sent me. I'm saving those. Those are like gold. I'm saving them for cool. forever. The first initial cut, like there's one, there's one cut, and then it's the slice up to it for the base yeah, for of the, the nose. nose yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, w with this one, what I normally do, well, I say normally, I've made three of them, is that I cut the 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 thing that's going to be the base of the pillar at, at, the, at the top first. So that's just a line around the bottom and a line around. Oh, that's smart too. I did that as well. I did that as well, and I'm I'm totally not doing that right now. So I'm gonna tr I'm gonna try try that as well. Something else that I found that I like too is I got this little little Tupperware thing because uh, the XPS loves to get everywhere, and I try I tried oh, to like really wrangle it early on. Yeah. That's a really good idea. I mean, uh, basically, I ha haven't done that, and my living room floor is about to become covered in <laughs> XPS foam. And, and like, so, my wife, uh, Blue Cat, who's on the stream here, she um, very kindly has let me use the living room this evening. Nice. And thank you, Blue Cat. I, Thanks I, for loaning it. Yeah, I have promised that as soon as I've done this live stream, I'm on bedtime routine with our little one. <laughs> and then once I've done bedtime routine, I have to get up and clean up the living room. Yep, that's that's, that's my the rest of my evening. That's a that's a fair that's a fair um, trade off. Fair trade off, I think for sure. It's it's definitely gonna be gonna be a fair trade off. I'm gonna start. Yeah, these little the little outlines are very very important too, uh, to just to help like shape shape this build. 
I'm doing a rough. Oh man, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. Gonna be a rough one. I've already like carved up the backside and overcut here, but that's okay. The thing is, I, I think that like maybe the first few carves, you'll kind of make a few mistakes along the way and yeah. be like, oh, that's not quite what I want. But I honestly think that this will come together very quickly just for anyone who just puts a little bit of time into it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's now, I think the thing that I've noticed about your, like that knife, if you're going to do this and you, it's something like the carving the XPS foam is something you get really excited about and you're like, man, I really want to do that. I would highly recommend investing in actual carving, a carving knife because so would I. As yeah. you can see, I don't know if, like, well, they the, the viewers can see, like, I am going slow. It just, little cuts like this where you're cutting out and digging out, like, the Ulfa knife is good for uh, the cutting in, but carving like this is a little trickier. But it still works great. You just gotta, again, take your time. So, how long do these, uh, does one of these builds take now? for you like what carving out uh, a filler. I think we're about to find out um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, I the last one I did I think all in all with painting and everything probably took me about an hour and a half That's I would say bad. the actual good. carve if I'm going flat out probably about 45 minutes if I really push myself but that, I think it would be silly to do that just because you're dealing with a sharp knife you know uh, it's sort of careful yeah what is the rush there is no rush no rush no rush needed for this um let's see how we doing <laughs> you got people talking no i'm just reading i'm reading uh i bl believe that your wife like making sure you clean the floor after you uh, like it's, it's just following up what she said earlier. <laughs> oh, what did she say? Just saying, make sure you clean the floor. You got to clean the floor, dude. Yeah. Okay. Make sure you clean the floor. So this is like one, these pillars are pretty amazing. They got a lot of love on the tabletop crafters Facebook group. And Man, I like, I was so encouraged by that. Oh really, dude, I, t I knew, so I knew as soon as you. As soon as you posted it, I was like, it's going to get – because I've never – it's always exciting to find new stuff that you've never quite seen before. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen anyone really do a lot of carving with XPS foam. So it was exciting and inspiring for me. I was like, dude, this is amazing. Um, and I'm curious, like what other what other builds would you, would you want to play around with with this? Like what other, what other carving would you want to do? Uh, I have got a few ideas in my head that I'm working on. I'm working on an owl bear design at the minute. An owl bear one? Yeah. Like, um, like out of like a like actual ca carbon actual owl bear like monster or like a yes. pillar like a mo dude. Okay. That's I'd actually carve an owl uh, an owl bear. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. So now the reason why that's like to me doesn't seem like really like it's impossible is because. So this face is one of the things that I practice carving with out of wood. Another one of the things is little oils. Um, and also you can do little bears as well. Mm -hmm. So what's an oil bear is, I mean, it, it'd be very easy for me to take that to another level and just go, oh, oil bear. So I basically do the head of an oil with the bear body. And I mean, it won't be the classic necessarily D and D uh artwork look of an oil bear it would right. be my own so sort of a bit of artistic license obviously yep um but i think that that's kind of a, a good thing i think that like you know people having their own take on um characters from that world is a good thing so i think i think that'll be i think that'll look uh i think that'll look amazing i'm excited to see because you can get some like I said the texture in the carve and stuff like the the fur and the feathers on the owl. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be excited to see what, what you do with that. Well, actually, I mean, you mentioned that. I mean, that is the part that I'm probably least confident about. It, the, the, the actual shape 
of the the bear, like the, the general shape of it will come out nicely. But then whenever you get into the finer detail of something like the feathers and stuff, that's going to require probably a bit more time. And, uh, nice. Oh. That, yeah, that, so that's one thing that I want to want to make. But then, um, you know, like for, for the, these tabletop, uh, games with you know buildings and stuff like I want to make something oh hey Chris hey man how you doing hey guys good nice to actually meet you uh, officially now yeah for sure <laughs> As opposed to in, in, in. <laughs> what are you guys doing doing a bit of carving here yeah he's, he was just talking about the uh we're, we're into the build show him where you like look where where he's at with the build and then <laughs> I am I'm here <laughs> but I'm getting there. I'm I'm trying to like I'm trying to do other stuff too. I want to check check the channel, make sure this new picture is good with all of us. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, look at this. It's perfect. We're good there. We're right we're all we're we're all there. Um. Oh man, Richard Tilbury on here says, Mike, I think you need to do a dragon squatting on a plinth with the tail wrapped around around and wings tucked in. That would be that all? sick. That would be so cool. <laughs> um, now, whether or not, I mean, that that's probably not going to be like a simple, straightforward carve. I think that would take quite a bit of time. Do you know, if, if I was to do something like that, it, like the thing is, I don't think it's impossible. Yeah. Um, but I reckon it would be um, carving bits separately as opposed to out of one piece. So okay. things like the wings I would be sticking on afterwards, you know? Yep. So carve them all separately and then kind of piece together mm. kind of the way um, people do with minis yep yeah that piece yep, by piece step works. would be would be would be important because like it's just there's so there's so many there's so many levels to it all right i'm also i'm legit going back to this video that you sent me a while on facebook and looking at the the simple carves because I'm like I don't want to mess this up. I want to make it look good. Yeah, oh, it just yeah. takes a bit of time. I honestly think anyone can do it. Like, um, yeah, some guy. Whenever I posted it in the Tabletop Crafters Guild, underneath the where I'd mentioned that I was going to do a tutorial, someone, you know, like they they drew this. Or they had this picture of. Um, really simple childlike drawings of how to and then it jumps to this perfect picture of a horse yeah um yeah you're like uh what <laughs> yeah oh then it's well, coming back going back in i carving. just went ahead and pinned michael's video of him like working and i i feel like i'm just gonna spend the time watching him carve because this is pretty cool i haven't gotten to you haven't seen it yet huh i, I mean i've seen the stuff he's done but i haven't really seen anybody kind of do it so yeah i'm gonna get some stuff organized and sort of just watch him this is uh it's pretty it's, fun I, the thing about this is that like it's actually all kind of a little bit surprising to me in a way um all all of the positive feedback i've had of it because i think that you could learn this kind of carving stuff over a a very short period of time. I did learn over a very short period of time. Right. And, and I mean, that was one of the benefits of lockdown for me. Was, <laughs> right. Um, ra you know, like, cause that's how I spent my time was just carving. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got all of this extra time on your hands. All my work dried up. So I was at home anyway. Right. And so just get creative. And so it's really benefited me. And I mean, and uh, yeah, I, 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 mean, I can see if if you're if you're prepared to put a little bit of time and concentration into something like you, you can absolutely do it. Yep. I mean, I'm not I'm not as tied into the crafting community as you guys are, but I feel like maybe part of the reason you're getting such positive feedback is because not not really anybody else is doing it. Hmm. You know. Uh, I have, I've, I've had a look and uh, I haven't found anything yet, which was really surprising to me. Yeah. I, I, I'm kind of hoping that people do get into it because 
you know, I think that the potential of what you could make from XPS foam if you carve it this way is For like sure. basically your imagination. What what, yeah. what what do you want to make? <laughs> well, apparently somebody wants you to make a dragon uh, <laughs> wrapped around a pole, so get on it. Get on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get on the dragon. <laughs> I've got uh, a few builds that to, to happen before I, I get stuck into that one, I think. Uh, the mic is cut off. The top left view. We can't see what he was doing. Oh, no. What, Let's me? see. Hold on. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Let's try this. Oh, I can move my hands forward. Nope, a bit you're too. good. You're good. I can adjust. I'm going to help, help Richard out here because he's like, help me with this. So I'm going to... Make a slight adjustment. So if that's Richard Tilbury, Richard Tilbury, uh, he's a friend of mine that I did the glass videos with. I don't know if you've seen the glass videos. Yes, I've watched. I've watched uh, w the first one, um, but I was like, I was thinking, I thought that name looked a little familiar. Yeah. So, so he does. He makes some pretty awesome stuff. It's like equally as inspiring and cool to me as all of this tabletop crafting stuff is just really cool nice well there well there it is so well now that richard's throwing stuff down he needs to make a dragon atop a mountain on a volcano in glass so there it is That's richard think, challenge yeah. challenge throwdown <laughs> it's dragon dragon throwdown i think i think i'd rather take the xps one than the glass one on that <laughs> Chris, are you making? Are you making something as well there? Uh, I'm just going to do a bit of painting today. I um, had a lot of stuff going on this morning, and just I've been primed some minis. I'll show you. I don't know if the camera will catch it too well. Let me see if I can yep. get it in focus. Yep. So I've been working just like um, I have a mini sitting here that I can't show you guys because somebody might be watching the feed, yeah. and I don't want them to see it. Um, but I've been working on some um, just more like object source lighting. So I got a couple other ones that I was working on, which is that. Not sure how well that comes through. Let me see how this looks good. Yeah, that's cool. It's like some sort of kind of uh, almost like a Balrog looking kind of creature. Yeah, a little, little demon. And I have a, um, I already have a base that's kind of like uh, cracked lava, so I thought it would be cool to have the light coming from the ground. So that's why all the highlights on this are coming from below. And then I got this recently, Jesus, too. I'm going to give her like a glowing hammer. So, God. Yeah, a little dwarf. Um, so all the highlights are coming from, from the hammer. Which is why it's kind of one-sided right now, man. I got to get rid of this like virtual background, but my office is a mess, so I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, I, there's a, there's just some stuff I've been wanting to try. Like, I don't normally work this way, but I um, did everything and I did all the priming and highlighting, and then I kind of wanted to give like I just I was going to use I usually use washes after I paint after I base coat and I was going to try and actually use a wash as as a base coat and just see how that plays out so that's what I'm doing cool. did you finish that beholder what's that you, last week you were working on a beholder is it finished oh no man this thing's pro I mean I, I may have gotten a little further on this but um it's basically base coated right now and I um, I don't know. I have so many things that I'm like working on this. On this, I'm probably going to take a back seat, to be honest. Uh, no. <laughs> like the, the, um, the uh, Jeremy over at Black Magic Craft, he's got like this what what he calls his bin of shame. <laughs> minis that haven't been finished off yet. <laughs> right. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I've got I've got a few of those. <laughs> I've got. Um, I think I showed it last week that uh, diorama. Yeah, I worked on this last week, so you guys saw that a little bit. It's this little diorama I was doing for Colin. That is so cool. It's like a little mini forge, and I finally figured out what I'm going to add. Like one of the cool things that Colin had done for us, you know, he made the dioramas. They were they were kind of personal to our character, but also to. Um, there were, it included like real life 
stuff too. Like mine had a, a hammock and stuff, which is um, something that only Colin and I would really know because we do a lot of backpacking and, and we both hammock camp. Like instead of using like a tent and sleep on the ground, just like a hammock. So that was something he threw in as a little nod to that. But I finally figured out what I'm going to like kind of decorate out this thing with. Um, and I'm going to work on that at another time because I don't want, I want it to be a surprise for Colin, but that's what's going to happen. <laughs> Oh, that's show why me you now. Shoot. Yeah, that's why you can't shoot on camera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I'm excited to see to see what that is. I've been trying to like think about it and like, what is he gonna do? Like, what's the thing? But I'm like, ah, oh, screw it. Just be surprised. It'll be fun. Well, so. it just finally came to me. So, and I had um, needed some help from somebody, and finally got that help. So it's coming soon. Nice. Yeah. So what uh what are you planning to do with your columns at this point? I know um like I guess when I first saw them and I was like, "Oh my god, those are so cool looking." And it totally reminded me it just like to me it reminded me of like the scene from um Lord of the Lord of the Rings where they're <laughs> in the dwarven, you know, uh mountain yeah. and it's not i don't even know if there are like carved columns there but that's immediately where my head went and i just was like yeah. I, I could totally see these becoming the setting for you know a, a, a session it is that kind of thing i mean in the the movies in the lord of the rings they're not the columns aren't carved with faces in the lord of the rings but if you watch the hobbit um and in the mountain where smog lies on the treasure uh -huh. um, there are pillars that are carved with golden faces mm. uh, well they're, they're actually big forges so like the the the, the gold and um, comes spilling out of the mouth or whatever or um so but yeah so it's definitely based in that kind of dwarven mines kind of thing and like the plan is i would like to create a tabletop game scenario is probably going to be um, all homebrew game where I build a scenario inside some mines and now I have to build all my dungeon tiles and I have to build a tabletop game around a dwarven mine. Mm, I mean, nice. I could use the Lost Mines of Fandelver. I don't know if you yeah. played that one. You could totally do that one. That would be a fun one. It's cool. I played that one. Like, we completed that with my, my wife was the DM in our group and uh, that was a great game. And then Colin told me that you guys actually just kind of got into D and D during <laughs> during lockdown, right? Well, actually, uh, that was a bit of miscommunication. So my wife has been playing for years, ah, got it. And I've been watching over her shoulder, and I was I was kind of like the guy, oh, you're such a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then it was one of those things where like, okay. You know, we're not spending enough time together. We're both doing our own thing. Mm -hmm. Sure. We need to spend a bit more time together. So I'm going to take an interest in her interests. Right. And that ended up me joining a group. And fortunately, she was just chatting to a friend of ours about starting a group anyway. Yeah. And, yep, so that all started off. We were all newbies. So that was about two years ago. Um, so that oh, okay. was been playing for two years ago. And then right on. Into wanting to try and DM myself, and so I set up a group that is that has just been in lockdown with my nephews and nieces. They're all like sort of sixteen years old and younger, <laughs> um, and so I've been DMing for my nephews and nieces. So that's where the in over the lockdown thing came in was with my nephews and nieces. They've all just got it. Feet, so, so you went from like clowning your wife as a nerd to like full fledged on <laughs> carving dwarven pillars and running my own games, which is like, yeah. that's how it goes. Like, I feel like that's everybody's story. That's par for the course, man. I totally agree. I totally agree. Like, I, I feel like our group is the same, not the same way. Like I never, I, like I never clowned on it, but I was just like, like it wasn't something that. Uh, you know, I played it once before, and I think when we played it back in college, we were playing. We weren't playing. A, we were playing a model of the rules of 
D and D, but it was very loose, and it was like a modern zombie apocalypse version of it, and right. it wasn't quite the same, and yeah. it was still a fun experience. We had a blast, but um, yeah, it was different. It was much different, and now you know, it's it's definitely a chance to uh, to to do a, a bunch of stuff, and I think the big one is. Uh, you know, before the pandemic hit, it's, you know, a way to reconnect and connect with, you know, old friends as well. Like that That's maybe literally what it was for us. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a big thing or, you know, in in, you know, Chris's case, like he had met a couple of my friends before, but it's an entirely new group of, of folks to connect with. And now in the past six months, that seems to be even more important than ever. Yeah. So. Sure. For me, like specifically for the group that my wife DMs for, we had been friends years ago, but had kind of all kind of fallen out of contact. We we used to be part of like a, a music scene community, um, like we we go to gigs together every week, and yep. there would be bands and all of this here sort of stuff, and then that all kind of fell apart um, at one point, and. Uh, yeah, we just kind of obviously all still friends, but just hadn't been in contact for years. And yeah. then uh, John um, contacted Lucy. He knew that she played um, Dungeons and Dragons. He's just like, oh, I really want to play. So then it all just rolled on from there. And then basically every week we get to hang out. And it's cool. Really, really yeah. enjoyable. Yeah. Although, I'm jealous not you guys play every week. My character at the minute. Because. Um, in, in, the, in the naughty corner at the minute. The naughty corner. Um, uh, I'm curious. Uh, I know Richard. I, I think Richard's still still out there. But does Richard play D uh, D and D as well? I think he does, does actually, he? or or has done. Um, uh, we we spoke about it whenever I was in his workshop. He, I think he might have also played Call of Cthulhu. You know, Call of Cthulhu. Oh yeah, Call of Cthulhu, and he's also saying what is he. He said the Warhammer scene is what he was really big on. Oh, sweet. You'll have to check out my build on Monday's video then, Richard, because I've never made Warhammer terrain or tried anything. And, like, I got one little build that is kind of my first dipping the toe into the foray of Warhammer tabletop building. So, have to check that out. Uh, smallest group is three and biggest group is five. That's a good group. Uh, that's Blue Cat on there. Blue Cat two, that's a five. Is it three? Is a good number too. That's a, that's that's a lot of adventuring right there. For what? For number of players? Yeah, yeah. Dude, can you hear your kid in the background here? I hear him. I hear him. <laughs> they are always Colin excited. Colin and I both have four year olds, and we take turns letting them. Houses, so <laughs> they're currently here. I don't know what they're doing, but they're yelling and screaming. So I've slightly overcarved one part of this, but like, let me see. This is one of the thing. One of the things I mentioned in, in the tutorial is if you make a mistake and it looks like something's broken off or something, once it's painted up, that kind of looks like broken stone. So it kind of lends to it quite nicely because you know you right have... like an imperfection absolutely there's loads i mean in this one i think probably because i'm on camera and rushing it it's not quite as neat as the, the two that i've done previously or the three that i've done previously. so all the so i posed the question i was like what are some of your group like multiple people on here uh by the way good to see you daniel west thanks for joining um um you know Blue Cat, so uh, <laughs> Blue Cat, Daniel, they have multi, they're like, well, in one campaign I have this, and in one campaign I have this. I'm like, I want to be playing multiple campaigns. Right. That means more D&D. &D. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm jealous in, of you guys being able to play so many, it's like multiple campaigns. Does, does your wife play? <laughs> yeah, no. Well, <laughs> she does go. not I mean, play. I think, I think that that is the... The, the one reason why that it happened, and basically me joining Lucy's D and D world was probably the best decision I ever made mm. for our, uh, not just for for our household, but for our marriage. Right. 
right? Yeah. <laughs> just to have that, to have that uh, point of common ground. Yeah. It's well, it's it's again, like you said, it's just another way uh, to connect. Yeah. Absolutely. Another way to spend. It's a great way to spend time uh, with with anyone. Uh, but you know, why your your wife especially? That that'd be cool. I always thought like, um, I always thought she'd enjoy it. Like, I kind of one of these days, like, I want to like do a one shot and like try to <coughs> see if she played one night. You know, we were hanging out in bed and she was just like, uh, I was just, like talking, like trying to convince her, like you should play, like come play like one of the sessions. And she's like, I don't have a character. So like she was like, I was like, well we'll roll up a character. And she was like, all right. So, like, we rolled her up a character one night, and then I was like, this is great. And she's like, yeah, I'm not going to play, though. And I'm like, what? I was like, we have a character. It's right here for you. And she, she had fun, like, building it. I was like, see, that's that's the start. If I can get you, you just need to play it. Just need to play I, it. I got a sneaky suspicion if it had been the other way around, and I had been trying to get my wife to play, it might not have ever happened. Huh. Um, but, you know... I am really glad I, I, I tried out. Eventually. I'm just very aware that she's watching, so I have to say it all. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think the most intimidating factor for new players uh, to D&D is? Uh, probably RP, role-playing. For me, it was, you know, to, to, to get over your embarrassment of trying to pretend to be somebody else. Mmm. Mmm. I, I see. I mean, still, I find that hard, actually. Yeah, that's a tough one for me, too. Mm -hmm. um, the group I play with, Colin and all them, they're all actors. So, like, <laughs> it comes a lot more natural for them. Mm -hmm. um, I find that, like, in terms of RP, like, I don't necessarily, like, I don't, I'm not trying to create, like, a, some sort of totally different persona, but I do try to stay conscious of, like, my character's knowledge and, and driving forces and and so i try and play up on those even like i'm I, i'm not doing voices and like all sorts of crazy stuff but um yeah i don't know i feel like the hardest part for me was literally just trying to find people to play with mm. yeah. i had played as a kid and then um i didn't know anybody that played nobody i know plays um and I started looking around online, like, are there groups in my area that maybe I could join? And there were a couple, but that seems really daunting, too, like trying to join up with people you've never Don't played with know. before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I had been kind of lamenting that to Colin. And Colin was like, you know, <laughs> I know somebody who can, D who can DM. Right. I'll ask. And then the next thing I knew, he had, like, set up this group of people, and we had a DM, and, like, what did we start with? Like we we had like eight, we had eight. people. We had eight. We had, a, we had an eight man group. That's gonna be and, hard. Uh, to for. Yeah, Richard, our DM Richard is is phenomenal. But eight people, like it, it definitely it could. It's, you had to like kind of turn a couple of people away even because we were like, oh, the group's kind of big right now. I think you had a couple friends that sort of like, hey, yeah, they, I know they were Luke as a friend that we. Not, I mean, we've played with him in the one shots, but right, you know, we were kind of like, well, I don't know if, I don't know, like it gets difficult in a big group just because, like, you gotta, you gotta really gotta share the top, the floor with everybody. Yep. Yep. But it sounds are like, playing, are, you, are you in the middle of a campaign? We are. Oh yeah. I don't know if I'd call it the middle, but we we're about a year and a half in. <laughs> Whatever that means, we're yeah, we're like. Um, we don't, we're like, it may, I, I, I think this is going to be the one that like goes for, it's going to be, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while, but it's, it's, it's amazing because we have what six other backstories and six other components to, you know, play out. And they're all, they're all like, again, our DM is just doing an amazing job of tying everything into together. So it's. It's pretty fun. We've got, <laughs> we've got one one of. So I think our if our group is known for anything, 
or th- whenever I think of our group and whenever we play, I always think Michael, like we've when the deck of many things comes out, we can't help but draw from it, like complete we morons. Not yet. Well, I haven't, I haven't had it, I've, I've, I'm on a <laughs> critical role. Obviously, I've I've seen it play out. It's crazy. Yeah, it's the deck. The deck is uh, is is fun. Like uh, I'm curious for any of you in, out there watching in, in the live stream. Like, have you um, uh, have you guys drawn from the deck? And if so, like what what have you drawn? Like what? And cards by draw from the deck, he means have you guys pulled all the cards? <laughs> because that's what we did. <laughs> that's, that's what we we basically had to recycle the deck because we drew like. The first time we did it, someone's like, I'm drawing three cards. And like someone's like, well, then I'm going to draw three cards. I'm like, oh, my God, like, what are we doing right now? And it didn't go well. Be away for a TPK. Yeah, well, yeah. It, uh, Chris is we have, kind, we have a kind DM. So. We do have a kind DM. Um, uh, <laughs> you, uh, uh, Chris lost his soul and immediately went lifeless. And we had to go on a quest to find his soul again. Uh, and had to like go get his new character that he'd like made as a backup just in case. And was like, uh, I guess I'm playing this dude now. Um, yeah, but you totally, yeah, you gotta find, you gotta find the deck. The deck is fun. We've drawn from it multiple times. I think my favorite thing to come out of the deck though, one of our players drew like a fire demon. Is it a fire demon? I don't know. Some I, sort of demon. It's a demon that like. It's its sole purpose is to kill this one player. Like whoever draws it, it's like tied to them, and they 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 they've, they've ended up getting dubbed Matt Demon. So now now Matt Demon is is on our trail. And uh, a while ago, we created Twitter accounts for all our our characters. So we all have like my character. My dwarven barbarian has a Twitter account, and we all have created Twitter accounts, and we like talk smack back and forth about everything through Twitter. Like, have a little, it's just like another element of added banter into the gameplay beyond the game, too, in between sessions, because you know, you can't get enough DD. So, you gotta like talk smack on Twitter as your own like DD player handle. So, one day on Twitter, Matt Demon sends a friend request, and Matt Demon joined the Twitter feed and started talking crap about how they're gonna smoke us. And it like we didn't know for a long time about who Matt Demon was, and I'm not gonna say who Matt Demon. I know who Matt Demon is now, but uh, I mean, no at this one point knew. everybody knows, don't they? No, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't want to say. I don't want to say because if we if not everyone knows, I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm not ruining that. All right. So. Uh, but we could, like a fun campaign. Oh, it's 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 yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. We uh we've got we've got a lot on our plate. We are currently in a a city that its main source of economy is slaves, and they have a giant gladiator pit in the arena. And these guys, uh, like right now, the the entire city is uh filled with. Rakshasa. So I don't know. Are you familiar with the Rakshasa there, there, Michael? No, no. They're a basically like a hybrid humanoid, like tiger humanoids, but they're extremely kind of like tabaxi kind of thing. Yeah, similar to it, right? I think they're similar, but they're the the Rakshasa are extremely powerful and uh, like. They're they're immune to a lot of magic uh, above like a you have to be a certain level for it to impact them and they are uh, they're very powerful so like right now we're basically in a city who anyone anyone uh, they they can they can basically take the shape of anyone they want that they've come into contact is that right Chris I think that sounds right uh I don't know exactly how that works but yeah they're like really good at like illusions and mind control and uh they might be able to assume other forms so we're in like a world of hurt right now <laughs> like our cast we have a cleric and a, and a mage and they can't do anything because they're not high enough level yeah so you, you meant 
you mentioned the, the the deck of many things. We haven't got that, but we do have one player in our group who's got these. I can't remember what they're called exactly, but they're magical chocolates. Um, and <laughs> magical chocolates. Of, yeah, so each time he eats one of these chocolates, some different weird thing will happen. Uh, sometimes it's really good, and sometimes it's really bad. <laughs> so it's been that's been a source of quite a lot of hilarity. Yeah, love it. He's like Willy Wonka. Um, that's what I need. Well, sounds like my kids have a problem. So, yeah, that sounds that sounds like it's fun over there. I might go check on that here in a second. Yep. Pencil and oh, yeah, I need to get those, my game going with my nephews and nieces again. I, I kind of I've taken a bit of a break from that because they've done two stints from a little world that I built. I just need to write a new thing for them to do now. Next section. Mm. Um. Yeah, I want to get into that in a second. I want to talk to you about like that world, that the world building, and how you go about that for you. But yeah. where where are you at with your build right now? Uh, nearly done. Thank you. So I've kind of. Got, got to the point where I don't know if you see that. Maybe I put it up there. It's better. Yeah. There oh yeah. Go. There you go. Look at that. That look, that's looking good. I'm uh, I'm <laughs> I'm on my way. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to do that helmet. Check out the helmet I'm trying to put on this guy. Yeah, kind of like a dwarven helmet. You you kind of opted for a rectangular piece as opposed to a square bit. Uh huh. <laughs> I have. Well, I didn't glue them together. I like... I, <laughs> just like up, you guys. opted for pain? <laughs> <laughs> Contemplate this on the tree of woe. Um, no, I, 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 I've been messing around with not gluing them together. I want to glue them together, but I want to use... I want to use, like... I, I want to use, like, tacky glue and not the hot glue. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, although, it, I think it wouldn't matter. I'm... Well, I, I, but I definitely like the wider pieces that you create. These are these are good once you weight them. <laughs> but I definitely like the shape of yours better. They are definitely a little bit thinner than than they're not as thick as your piece for sure. Like the, the hot glue has been problematic. I actually destroyed one whole set of this um, by putting it on really hot and then uh, trying to glue them together too quickly and it just melted all of the the xps foam and kind of destroyed that i kind of chopped that up and i'm it, going to use it for some terrain um so you, you kind of just you can't you can't glue it straight away so you put glue on it you have to wait wait for a little bit before it cools a little and then sandwich them together oh nice i'm um Chatting with uh, Daniel on the chat here, he's he's asking about um, uh, he's asking about like our levels and the characters in our campaign, Chris, and you know, I told him we're level eleven, and he's got two, in his two campaigns. He's saying uh, my seafaring buccaneers are level four, and his covert op strike team just turned level seven. So Daniel West is playing the game right. He's got like two campaigns with two <laughs> sounds like two awesome campaigns running right there. Uh, we're just level our, our our campaign. We're level five at the minute. Oh, nice. We haven't leveled in a while. We leveled. Yeah, it's been a little it's while. Been a minute. I'm, like we we go in like bursts, and I and like I know Richard really wanted to like give us an opportunity to play. Like he asked us when we started the campaign, like what, how powerful do you want to be? Right. Like how thick do you want this to be? So I think he I think he leveled us up pretty quickly so that we would have, you know, access to some of the upper level fun stuff just on purpose. But I, I wouldn't mind if he, if he slowed it down a little now too. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be the selfish player and be like, no, man, keep, keep, keep me going. I want, I want that, uh, that, um, well, A, I'm trying to like multi class. I multi classed. So my barbarian is now level three. Le is level, or I'm sorry, level 10 barbarian, level one fighter. So 
I'm trying to get to that action surge stage. Um, and, uh, and then, but then the next level of barbarian, uh, for, for me is I have the ability if I pass a DC save, when I get knocked to zero HP, I cannot die if I'm raging. So I'm, I'm like, that seems like it might be important <laughs> at some point. I'm going to, tr I'm trying to, I'm trying to carve little, uh, I made like this helmet for, for the door, the, the pillar, and I'm trying yeah. to carve and draw like little runes on the, like basically designs on the metal helmet right now. So I'm okay. trying to see how that goes. Huh? So it, I, I find for little details like that. You can just do one. I don't know if you can see my camera here. So like one straight line down. Yeah. Then an ever so slightly to an angle, cut mm -hmm. a sliver out, and then do the same that way on the other side. So rather than digging something out, you do one sliver and then two small slivers, and it'll pull out a really nicely cut little piece. Nice. I for this one, all I did was I just got a pencil. I don't know if you can. Oh, that works even. That works great. Too. Yeah, I, j I, j I just was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw that little band on there and see, see how that goes. I don't know. This dude's coming along. He's coming along. First one. Let's have a look. Oh, you want to see it? Yeah, yeah, hold on. So. Rooms the, are looking good, man. Yeah, it's coming along. Not, not too shabby. It's all right. I'm trying to think of like a cool pattern like you did – so for that back pattern, you did like that neat uh, – was not trying – but they're, they're, they're almost angled. It's the back pattern on, on the build. Like you – it's yeah. it's the multiple layers of like stone that were either triangular or, point, or pointy. Like uh, yes. How uh, – that's what I want. Like what is my step for that? Like is it – so you do that in layers. So the can, can you see the the middle one? Yeah, hold it a little closer. Let me let me, let me, let me do it in this one. Oh, there we go. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. So this middle one uh, here. Okay. So that's the top layer. So you you carve that one out first, and you only want to carve away about a mil a millimeter or two, and you carve a millimeter or two the whole way down. Uh huh. Then. You outline the second one and do the process again. Oh wow! I, 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 I don't know if I'm explaining myself very well, but that's about as many words as I can string together. For that. No, you're making sense. It's just it's me trying to like. I'm also one of the. For me, I'm. I need to see it as it's happening, which is why the videos and like the tutorials are so good for me, because uh, I. I, I need to be able to see it to make it happen. So I'm actually the same. That's why I love YouTube and like so much. I mean, basically, even the, the I don't know if you've seen any of the drawing videos that I've done. Um, that came out of the back of me watching tutorials on YouTube again, just to get back into drawing again. Yep. And YouTube is such a good resource for for people who want to learn pretty much anything. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. What I do with painting, I'm like, how do I do this? And I just go Google it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Googles. The Googles. Um, all right. I'm going to try. So that's cool. I've kind of got this carve to a good stage. I'm happy with where this one's at. I'm going to go back because I want to do that, that layering right. I want to do it. I want to do it good. So I'm gonna take take my next piece of foam. I'm gonna try to start a new one here. Cool. So this uh, this will make at the end of by, by the end of today that'll be four four pillars that I will have. This will be my fourth as well. Nice. Which is enough to hold something up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Have you built much scatter terrain? Like, what do you find yourself building, uh, Michael? Do you find yourself building any 
do you find yourself building lots of scattered terrain now or like uh, no because of the minute i'm trying to come up with kind of content for my youtube channel like i'm my build time is the same time that i have for filming so i've got a whole i've got a notebook of uh, videos that i want to make and things you know so one of the things is going to be scattered terrain uh, that's coming up. I, I mean, I spent a whole day making foliage the other day. So oh, um, yeah. cutting, cutting up tiny, tiny pieces of hemp and string and uh, turning it into grass by painting it and then mixing it and drying it and all sorts of stuff that took ages. Um, and then I w went to the park with my daughter the other day and I was picking lichen off trees. <laughs> nice. Um, which was nice because it was educational for her as well, so that was great. And so all of that's going to become part of the, the, the terrain for my little house that I have video for. Okay. So that's the next couple of videos that I'll be doing soon will be the, the painting for my little house and the, the terrain for that. So it's going to be in the middle of, I think I might have a bit of a river as well. Oh, nice. So, uh... The answer is this. This is kind of all the terrain side of things is pretty new to me, mm -hmm. um, but I've got a sneaky suspicion that uh, there's going to be a lot coming out. A lot so more. Got, Good. Yeah, I've, I've got a few carvings coming up though. Uh, I'm actually going to release a video tomorrow, which is a um, stone carving. My first stone carving. Your first stone carving. Yeah, out of actual stone, so I... I Damn. Uh, what, what stone did you use? I just went out into the garden and I got a random stone. <laughs> and so, uh, I love that this single skill set of, like, carving is applicable to... Like, you're applying it to a bunch of different material. Like, it's... Oh, yeah. That's, like, just fun. And then also, like, I'm thinking about the endless possibilities, like... Okay, so what's cooler than having textured foam that looks like stone is actually <laughs> like I put my stone carving down on on the on the battle mat. Like that's amazing. Yeah. So I'm I'm, I'm gonna start painting this guy now. You're gonna paint him. Nice. Get to get yeah. two. Jump two. I'm gonna try to like see if I can get one more pillar on this dude and i'm gonna try i don't i'm trying to like i'm gonna try to do like a braid in his beard carve a braid oh, in his beard in this one it's probably gonna fail miserably but that's all it is is just learning how to not do it so that's okay I think once it's painting all of that will kind of look like just stone and stone and <laughs> i think mistakes for this kind of thing almost make it better sometimes yeah yeah it's just more texture to it yeah yep for sure for sure let's see so daniel i asked daniel um i'm curious like any other any other fo is is your wife starting to like build i know she's dming is she building anything for the tabletop now too michael no but i do ask her advice on a lot of things so she has she got a first like, I mean, which is the highest mark you can get in uh, art and design in, in university. So she, she's oh, nice. extremely creative. She did textile designs uh, at university. Um, so she is, like, I mean, the other day she was, like, just, like, she saw me making flopping. And she just gave me a whole bunch of advice on that. Oh, nice. Or, or you name it. I mean, she's, she, she knows got tips for everything when it comes to the artistic side of stuff so it's a good resource to have super um, lucky but in terms of her actually building anything yet no but nothing yet lots of advice. i could see that she might get into it i know she makes moss and stuff mm. but she's more interested into the actual like she she She'd be into writing stories and writing poetry and all sorts of things. Oh, like that. nice. So she'd be more into the writing the world kind of thing, creating the story around the game. Like, very creative in that way. That's she's a great DM because, 
like when we're in the game, her ability to like write the story as she's going along is quite literal. <laughs> Dude, wow, Chris. that's cool. The, I can't yeah. mute that's, myself. You know, Those is, children. Like, you know what's hilarious about that is I know I can feel your pain. I've got a two-year-old at the minute, and like literally yesterday we had a whole day of that. So, yeah, so, but she's helping me with one thing at the minute, uh, which is, well, I'm not going to say too much about that because I'm going to put a video up of it soon, but yeah, I'm getting advice from her a lot. So what about you on that front? Anyone else kind of creative in the family? Um, I mean, my, my son, he's, he's really enjoying... Like when we were getting ready for the live stream right now, he was he was like, "Are we gonna paint right now?" And I was like, "No, we can paint after." It's like we gotta paint after, dude. Um, and he was just like, he was bummed. He's like, "I want to paint now." Um, but he's really enjoying enjoying it. Um, he's enjoying the painting process. He's enjoying like building terrain. I set up, of course, my studio in the garage, and then all of a sudden he, um, uh, he definitely uh, set up right next to me. So he, he's, he's very much kind of getting into the craft as well, which I think is super cool. Like at a young age to start building and, you know, he, he has his own set of dice. Like I'm excited. I'm hoping this will be something that he'll enjoy doing with me for years to come, but we'll see. Yeah. 100%. I mean, that's the same for me. I'd love, um, Daniel in the chat here is inspiring to start a frost grove table that he's going to choose for a year. Just finished cutting out panels and 3D printing cobblestone texture right now. Dude, you're 3D printing a cobblestone texture roller? That is amazing. Did you... So, that's pretty cool. I'm wondering I'm wondering if he used... Um, did he, like, design his own roller or did he pull it online? And what is he 3D printing on? That's my question to you, Daniel. Do you... I'd, I'd love, like, I'm thoroughly jealous of anyone who's got a 3D printer. So cool. Yeah. Like printing your own minis, you can print, you can pretty much print anything now. It's really cool. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. Like, now is a really amazing time to be into the hobby because there's so many, there's a lot of versatility you can use with the, with the, with the roller. Uh, or, well, same with the roller, but like with the printer by itself, like it's, it's, it's endless. It's, it's, you could print little bits of terrain. You can pit, you can print like, uh, small, like sweeteners for the terrain, like shields, swords, crates. Like there's, there's just a, a bunch of stuff you can, you can utilize it for. What are you printing on? Printing it. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, now I gotta find a way to like, like, how, what build can I u utilize like all these dwarven dwarven pillars? <laughs> like, what what setup can I? You know, I've never made trees. That's something I haven't made yet. So That's... when you're talking about the flocking. That's coming up for me. That's what all the flocking's for. That's yeah. coming up. That's kind of why I was asking that question in the in the Tabletop Crafters Guild about is there a way, and I'm sure somebody, maybe someone out there knows now, is there a way of kind of preserving tiny, small plants um, without all of the green foliage dying and falling off? Like, I mean, can you spray something on them that makes them stay like that forever i don't know like because i mean if you had little trees you could just put them on your terrain and it would look amazing right that's 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 a good question so posing that to everyone in the chat too like how do we preserve real real um plant life is there is there a way that you guys have utilized um print or not printing but is there a thing that you're utilizing to um, preserve preserve uh, terrain, whether that's plant life, rocks, uh, natural natural stuff that you pull from from Mother Earth? 
<laughs> Richard Tilbury is saying 3D printing is cheating. That he's old school. <laughs> he's old school. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there it, it truly is like, there's some stuff like, uh, when I was looking for uh, those dioramas that I was making for the D&D group, I think I mentioned this last week in the live stream. For a one-year anniversary, I took on the task of I wanted to build, like, as a little gift for everyone, I built their own, like, individual di dioramas for their characters in the in our campaign. And one of our characters was, uh, like, essentially, like, a city guard or city watch. So I built, like, his little guard hut. Um, and I was, I was like, I want to print out a little helmet for him. And um, I went on Thingiverse, which uh, Daniel mentioned that he's, like, that's where he went and pulled this 3D roller from. Thingiverse is a great, great resource. A bunch of free stuff on there for 3D printing. And I, I found this little little uh, medieval helmet that I downsized, put it in the, uh, the splicing program, and printed it out. I ended up not using it because uh, I know it failed in a couple different print sizes, which would have been fine because it could have been like a rusted out helmet. But it's just like little moments like that where... You can, like, it's just, you have the, the fact that you should have the ability to mess around with that in the hobby is pretty cool. Um, but. I'm just going to mute myself for a second here, guys. Yeah. Um, to, to use my hair dryer to get an advance. <laughs> Go for it. Go for uh, it. Just, how do I mute myself? I got you. I can mute you. I have the power to mute you. That's what I did earlier. I muted you, Chris. I was like, oh. Uh, I saw. I was like, thank God. <laughs> I was like, I'm, mute, I'm muting it. Um, us. Glycerin. Glycerine. Blue Cat saying paint them in, in glycerin. Oh. Glycerin, huh? Ooh. Some of that stuff, if you just, if you do a, like a proper drying of it, you can get it to hold most of its properties. You know, like yeah. some of the really vibrant colors in the plants are going to probably dull down a bit, but if you dry it properly, uh, you can get some of that rigid. I say that like I know what I'm talking about, <laughs> but I know enough to, I know an old, a tiny little bit. But, right, right. But I think too, like once you've dried them, like a bit of like matte varnish just to kind of hold things in place isn't a bad option either. Right. Yeah, the matte varnish would probably, probably work pretty well. Oh, I totally... Look at that cut. This is a good cut. I don't know if you can see this. I gotta bring it up here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pin you for now. I totally met. Look at. So I was like, here's the nose, and I sliced it all the way through the other side. Oops. I did not. Uh, all right. So moving on to this corner, <laughs> we'll move on to a different corner here. Oh my gosh. That was. Well, I'm glad that I'm practicing on these little minis with what I was thinking of doing because it's not working out like I had hoped. What's and I don't want to apply it to the larger my other minis. one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what didn't work? What didn't you achieve? It just well, I normally you would you know you would base everything and then start applying the wash and the highlights and and then you would probably like if you're doing some object source lighting you're gonna go back over and, and paint that lighting in mm -hmm. and I just wanted to see like could you base essentially base coat something with a wash mm -hmm. and because I I wanted to retain like the highlighting that I've done just with the priming and the and paint mm -hmm. and like there's areas where I don't really want it to have a lot of color, but I do want it to have a bit of a tinge of say like Brown versus just straight black. I and see. Just not, I'm not sure that the wash is going to give me enough, um, punch. Basically. So okay. I'm going to have to do it. I can see why people don't do it that way. Yeah, well, that's but that's that's it was a good it was good stuff to test it out on like those prints that yeah. that we had yeah, like yeah. this perfect perfect test run. Um, so here's we've got some feedback from from uh, the chat here. Uh, Richard Tilbury is saying um, you can cut uh, and dry plant stems, umbels like cow parsley, then dry 
Uh, best hung upside down spray with a varnish, right? Or dip in like a runny plaster. Yeah, it's pretty okay, cool. Yeah. That's a that's a good one to to try. Thank you for that, Richard. That's a good suggestion. And then Blue Cat saying it's an old craft technique for preserving color in autumn leaves. Never tried it on a whole plant though. Are you talking about now, Blue Cat? Is that re reference? Are you talking about glyph the glycerine, or are you talking about Richard's technique? Because um, I think those would be a really good setup. I um, and again, this is this is um, Michael asked this question earlier in the tabletop crafter group this morning, Chris. Like he was like, "How do I preserve these plants?" So that was kind of like I was like, "That's a good question. I've never I never even thought about that before." Because um, I haven't most of my stuff that I've built has been structure based. It hasn't been like uh, you know the foliage based. And like I said, we I've talked about that for a long time now about trying to build. Build uh, some been some. Talking uh, about making a tree for a while. I know, I know. I need to, I need to try it out. There's a really cool tutorial. I think it's on Tabletop Magic. Or the, is it Tabletop Magic? It's called. Um, tabletop Witchcraft. Yes, that's one. Yeah, it's Tabletop Witchcraft. Witchcraft. He he did a. It's quite a large tree. Um, I, I think he's got a tutorial up there. It's really really good. It's like with tin foil. And stuff like that is very cool. Try that one out. You can hear me again, yeah? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that dried my hair. So then, what's your process for these columns? I assume you you're, you mod podge them, and then are you just going in and dry brushing on top of that? Yep, pretty much. Uh, so yeah, mod podge, and, and uh, I'm using blackboard paint. Uh, you know, for for creating blackboards for schools, uh, not because of any cool technical reason, only because that's what I had. Right. And then, so that's mixed majority. I'd say probably eighty percent Mod Podge, about twenty percent uh, black blackboard paint for the okay. base coat. And then my next color is. Uh, which I'm putting on right now actually is graphite grey um, in just what's it called uh, type of paint you know acrylic that's the one uh, yeah. graphite grey and then after that I do uh, neutral grey value 5 as it happens and then I do uh, a mix of neutral grey with titanium white for the highlights at the end oh nice I found uh, I found this really cool uh, uh, folk art paint the other day. Um, this is the folk art brand that I normally. I'm gonna go with a medium gray and like maybe a parchment to touch these up later. I don't know if I'm gonna get to it today, um, but the. Uh, the one that I finished this guy off, the wood one, I used yeah. a barn wood. It's a barn wood. It's almost just like a really light gray. It's it's a gray color. And I was like, dude, I'd never seen the barn wood color before, and I completely fell in love with it. I used it for my little bridge build uh, that I did a couple weeks ago. And then yeah. I've been I've been through. I used it last week to paint up the uh, the little lean to. Uh, um, my alone lean to, uh, you yeah. know, like your the, outhouse. Yeah, my outhouse. <laughs> that wasn't an outhouse. So now it's a shelter. Um, right. So the uh, that, that that's a color that I I kind of I kind of uh, have fallen in love with now, and I seem to be painting everything with it. So do you, you ever... guys should try some glow effects in there, like paint, like. Oh. Where the eyes and mouth are, or something. Mm, that's cool. That would be very cool. Like That'd be cool. Are you uh, do, when you draw, when you do you use a sponge at all, uh, Michael, in your painting? Do you like stipple, like, or what do you what do you how do you how do you apply the paint when you when you go to town on it when you start starting? I literally use this this one brush for everything. Yep. <laughs> and it's a really old crappy brush, and. Um, the thing is that like if you make your brush really dry when you're doing the dry brushing like make it super dry because you can always add more but it's hard to take it off do you know what i mean yeah yeah so when you do your dry brushing just make it super dry you can add more 
uh, if you want to. The thing is, with, with, with this kind of stonework, I mean, what, what Chris is doing there is way more difficult. Like, that's detailed paint jobs, you know what I mean? It's a different sort of thing. You have to retain character or whatever. Yeah. Right, right. Yep. Yeah, you can definitely overpaint on the minis, and then it just winds up looking like a giant blob with no detail. Yep. I, I think back to, like, my first, you know, minis that painted back back in the day and like they were definitely like it's come a long way <laughs> it's come a long 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 way i love but that's that's just what's so cool about about the the hobby like practicing and learning new stuff like again a week ago and even this first one remember how i was like what are the steps like what are the videos this one that i'm started off on like even having just done uh, the second one today, that step of like those initial cuts, it's like cut, cut here and like already, you know, feeling a little bit more comfortable and confident in the process, you know, imagine surprising all the practice. Yep. It's, it really doesn't take long to, to pick it up. I think. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I'm pretty much done here for this guy. Nice. Are you, you're gonna you're gonna complete them, aren't you? You're gonna get it. Uh, I'm doing my very last strokes as I speak. So I'm it's gonna try. Pretty sweet. I think I've over highlighted some areas, but that's okay. Yeah, I'm done. That's an, another one for the collection. I nice. see it. Oh, <laughs> super dope! Look at that thing. Cool. Uh, I love those, those, those layered effects on that stone above the, like at the, at the bases. Oh, you added some like deeper cracks in there too, on the top side, on the sides there. Yeah. I, yeah. I kind of, I was going to beat this one up a bit more. Let's put it on this camera instead. It's good. That's looking good. I like that. I like that. Yeah. So I know I have collection of four of these guys so that's kind of cool dude tabletop is gonna be is gonna be sick like i, I like <laughs> you like how many tabletops now are gonna have these dwarven pillars on them because of your video you know what if if that actually happens and that becomes a real thing that would make me so unbelievably happy. Like you would, you, I, I don't even know. I mean, I was so surprised at the feedback that I got. Like, just how many? It was something like 260 people. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, it was a lot. Like, what the heck? This is crazy. I wasn't surprised at all. I knew that was going to happen. Like, it's, it's just a really cool, a really, really cool build and a neat design. Like, that's... Again, I think if you can find something that gets people inspired, right? A couple weeks ago, Jeremy from Black, Black Magic Craft put up that video on uh, the Mage Tower. Yeah, that was so cool. Yeah. yeah, that's a cool one where you get to get to basically just stack it and create create this little little tower. But I'm like, that's that's such a versatile piece and such a such a like source of inspiration. All of a sudden, like of sudden of them say again. Yeah. I definitely saw a number of them in my feed. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I'm quite happy I've got four of these on. Yeah, those are going to be great. Those are going to be great. So sea, sea buccaneers, Daniel. You need to you need to create a ship. That's what you uh that's what you need. Yeah, Daniel's saying really quality work, uh, Michael, on, on your pillars there. He's dig he's digging on your pillars. Well, um, I, I might actually just jump into the chat now that I'm no longer building. Yeah, so jump into the chat and and, and, uh, and chat with everyone. Let's see. I have less than – let's see if I can do this in 30 minutes. Like my goal is to try to – I don't know if I'm going to – I can at least Mod Podge everything. I don't know if I'll get it painted, but – Carve this next one up. 
and see what I can do. Um, this is the bottom lip. It's kind of weird, I find, to be replying to chat whenever the people can actually hear you, so I might just actually not reply with, just read it. <laughs> you can. <laughs> you can do it. But yeah, thanks for everyone uh, of my friends who have actually tuned in. I've got Beck there, and Richard, and Jammy Jams there. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you guys for, for tuning in. Thank you to, like, it's... It's, it's always lovely. Like that's kind of the whole purpose. Like we get really excited to, to share this, I don't know, just to share, share some space and time with you guys. It's nice to have folks join us and hang out and yep. see what we can craft and build. Are you guys building anything today is my question. Like that's my question. Are you guys just hanging out with us, watching us, what we're doing or are you guys, are you guys building stuff too? That is my question. Well, here's one. So the the person in the in the chat who's uh, a friend of mine, a neighbor, uh, Beck, she does printing, litho printing, or I think it's called litho printing, and um, she's a friend of mine and Richard's, and so I've been occasionally popping in and saying, so yeah, I want to do a video chat with you and make a video of you for my YouTube channel. Yeah, so, very cool stuff. Really cool. And it's it, what kind of printing is it again, Michael? I think it's called litho printing or lilo printing. I can't can't remember the actual. But so it's you carve out out of this uh, I don't the material, and then you paint on it and you do prints. Oh, cool! Yeah, so, very cool. Yeah, lino cut. Lino cut. That's what it is. Yep. Lino cut printing. Yeah, that stuff's really yeah. cool. Uh, actually, if anyone wants to check it out, it's Pangolin Beck. Put on it, Instagram. Yeah. Put that in the chat for, for everyone too, please. That would be in great. Instagram. Hopefully I spell it right. I'm going to actually check my Instagram to make sure that I do get it right. Some really, really cool stuff. So yeah, that's one of the areas that I'd like to take my YouTube channel is just getting other artists and other people chatting about what they do. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely one of the things that I've enjoyed about your channel is it's not just it's expo it's like all the things that you get excited about that you really appreciate and want to learn more about and you're featuring other artists. It's not just the tabletop crafting world, it's it's art in general, which well, I, mean, I really, I really so, enjoy. Yeah, I, I don't see my channel becoming specifically about tabletop craft. Um, I'd like to just keep it open ended to pretty much whatever's kind of inspiring at the time. Right. You know, so right now I'm really into the tabletop crafting bit, and I'm going to do a whole bunch of stuff in that, and I think that's always going to be a recurring feature on the channel. Yeah. But then I, I just love wood carving as well, so that's <laughs> going to be a recurring feature on the channel. Nice. Drawings. It's funny actually how I'm kind of probably not drawing as much anymore now that I've gotten into all of this crafty side of things. But there are a few drawings that I want to do. What drawings are you are you thinking about doing? Uh, well, I've got, you know, have you seen the series Vikings? Yeah. Um, Ragnar Lothbrok. As in the main character, the like, um, I think he looks pretty cool. I'm gonna do like this very Viking kind of drawing. That's one thing that I've got coming up. So, there, yeah. uh, so, cause the the world the world is small. Uh, I have couple couple colleagues. Um, Richard Ryan was the swordmaster on Vikings and did all the fight choreography. Oh, he was one of the coordinators, and then another colleague, Patrick Kelly was in the show as well and he was one of the uh one of the stunt players and was on the show for for a while so i i love that show that show is amazing do you know what luckily i had another piece of xps film sitting right here so i'm going to make another one are you gonna make another one you're probably Might gonna well. finish that one by the time i get my second <laughs> one done and, and painted like but it's all good i'm I am enjoying uh, the build and carve. I, I think you stepped away. <laughs> Check this out, Michael. You can see I started this car, this build, 
and I was like, oh, I'll carve. I'm trying to like not let it be in the light here. Uh, I totally, here it is. I started the cut for this and then I, I totally like messed it up and went across the backside and I was like, well, good thing there's four corners to this. I'm going <laughs> to, well, that, that's one way of dealing with that, but uh also i do think that whenever you're carving like this you should really um become okay with that kind of a mistake yeah and just own it. you go like okay so now it's going to like look, look like this instead yep yeah because that's that true ultimately will only you know if, if you're talking about something that looks like old carven stone historical you know dwarven mines it's, it's not going to look neat right Right. It's, all, it's gonna look all beat up. You are not wrong. This is a good. I really like that approach of sort of like, not oh, you know, don't let the the, the mistakes or the little imperfections dissuade oh. you and and and, and sort of just roll with it, like yep. play it in, like make it part of the piece. I think that's just like a great philosophy for what you're doing. Yeah, it's a good philosophy for the whole hobby too. Like right. rolling with the, I mean, that's kind of D and D, right? <laughs> yep. You're role playing and you're going along. It's not going to go, it'll never go quite how you plan. Right. Uh, that's for sure. I, I had a terrible session on Wednesday last week. What happened? Uh, I basically, my whole, he, my whole team hates me now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we encountered a revenant. Do you know, you guys know what a revenant is? Nope. So a revenant is basically this kind of undead creature okay. that um, they they don't know that they're dead for a start. Um, they're not, this this creature wasn't necessarily it wasn't an evil creature, but they didn't know they were dead, and they 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 basically they don't die until they finish their their oath or their task that they 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 were, they were supposed to be finishing. Anyway. Uh, I felt that the best course of action was for me to convince this revenant that he was dead. Like you, you, you need to understand that you're dead. So I tried reasoning him with him, with him, uh, with him a couple of times, but I got so stuck on this idea that I ended up right. Okay, the only way I can prove to you that you're a revenant is if I try and kill you and you don't die. So, so basically, I spent uh, the next hour and a half stabbing this revenant. Um, to which all of my the rest of my team thought I was thoroughly cruel, and they fell out with me. You know. So there you go. Well, at least you're not in love with the rock shasa that's trying to kill your entire party, and you keep trying to like convince the group that there's good in this like inherently yeah. natural evil being, because that's kind of where my character's at. <laughs> well, that's the thing is that if you're playing the character, like so, my character's a paladin. And he's on the path of vengeance. The, the, so he, it, the undead to him are abhorrent. So like I'm, my my reasoning is that like, look, he's lucky I didn't kill him anyway. <laughs> I think that's I think I think that's a fair approach. You got to go with got to go with your gut on what you think get. your character would do, and just roll with it and. Who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe next session it'll it'll like I, I come think full swing and something crazy will happen because you are trying to kill it and it'll be funny as hell. Yeah, I'm gonna do a bit of damage control at the beginning of the next <laughs> session. See if I can see if I can get everyone back on friends with me. How often do you guys play, Michael? At least once a week. God, yes. jealous. So jealous. So jealous. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we, we, we to and fro, like sometimes it's Saturdays, sometimes it's Wednesdays. Um, at the minute we are playing Wednesdays because one of our players work, has been working at weekends, but then he is they, they've just been put into lockdown where they are, so we might be able to do a game on Saturday as well. So yeah, so I say at least once a week. So I'm actually in three groups at the minute. Wow. What? Yeah, so one where my wife is the DM, one for my nephews and nieces where I'm the DM, and then another one where I was the DM, but another guy's just taken over so I can play. 
Oh, nice. You know? And that, that's with the guys that I do jiu-jitsu with. Uh, we, we created a little um, D&D group as well. Dude. That was... I had wanted to ask, you said that um, your wife has a, a background in art and stuff like that. Um, it's, I mean, it, from the, what you're talking about, it sounds like either you have a background or you've just been doing a lot of art because you're talking about drawing, you play music, you're doing this, like... Um, mostly I would say that my background is actually probably music. If, okay. If I had to. Uh, that's what it's been primarily over the last 20 years. Um, I did what we call an A-level in art. So an A-level is whenever you're 17 years old, kind of 18 years old, that kind of area. Uh-huh. Um, but I, f- I didn't fail, but I got the lowest possible grade for a <laughs> It was horrible. And like, the thing is that the drawing, I don't know if you've seen on my Instagram, uh, that yesterday I posted a picture of Jimi Hendrix. Oh, I saw that. That was my A, that was my A level final piece. Oh, that looked good. Yeah. The, the, the drawing was good, but the thing is that like, okay, so I'm dyslexic and a large portion of the examination process was, um, written work. And so basically my written work was atrocious. It was terrible. Um, and the thing is though that I really got disappointed by that result I got a D and um, you know before I got that result I'd been daydreaming about maybe uh, maybe I could do like art at, at university and I could do like animation or other things like that and then I just got disappointed and mm. kind of I guess gave up a little bit which was a really really bad idea mm. Although it's brought me on a different path, I got into playing guitar and did music, and I went, ended up going to university to play guitar instead. So nice. Cool. So it did. That bring... is so sad. It is, but now it, like there's a happy ending because here we are. I mean, there so, is, but God, you, know, you can't you can't lament over these things. It's just, life is weird, and like you know, you live and learn. I I made a foolish mistake of of. Just going well, that guy. Like you know, screw that. You know that doesn't mean I'm not good at something. Right, right. And uh, so yeah, but then it brought me full circle. Like my mom's always been like, over the years, she's just like, you really need to do your creativity. You need to get back into the art stuff and da da da. da. So since I've been doing this YouTube channel, she's just like, she's been over the moon. <laughs> That's awesome. How was the birthday Zoom? So oh, it was really cool. It was really cool yesterday. Yeah, we played um, a bunch of games. There's a, a website called Kahoot, K A H O O T, uh-huh. where you can you can create these quizzes and play them on Zoom at the same time. Really cool. Uh, so we did that. It was my mum's seventieth birthday. We were all logged in, all the kids and all the grandkids. Nice. It was fun. I think some of them are tuned in actually. Let's bring this one. Yeah. What about you, Chris? Are you do you got a creative uh, uni kind of background, or what, what's your background? Um, yes and no. Uh, I I was I was super into art as a kid, and um, was always drawing, and then it just never really struck me as a career path. Well, it's not a career path. That's for yeah. <laughs> so. Um, it was always just something I did for fun. And then, it, you know, that kind of um, takes a backseat as you're going through uh, college uni and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then I had a, I had a really good friend who was uh, going to school for, for graphic design. So whenever I was hanging out with him, he was, you know, you know, you kind of doing your work and stuff. And I was like, what are you doing? Show me how to do that. And just was like, why, why didn't I do this? And so um, I signed up for, I, I don't know what you would call it where you guys are. They call it extension out here, but basically it's more of a, it's a little more like trade school as opposed to university. Um, tech. tech, yeah, it might be more. I mean, it's really like you go and get a, a certificate for a very specific thing and i went for graphic design and Mm. i thought i was going to do websites and then um kind of fell in my one of my professors i was interning for was like 
there's this clothing company um, that he did a logo for and was like, he's like, you'd be perfect there. They're looking for somebody that they can do a bit of everything. And, and I was like, yeah, sure. Like, okay. Like I didn't know the first thing about clothing and any of that stuff, but yeah, like I want a job and I don't want something that pays me. And uh, so I went there and loved it and have been doing that ever since. And so, you, so that's what I do. Yeah. And you've got an Etsy store on as well, like for t-shirts and stuff. Yeah, I have um, an Etsy store and a website I that I opened. It's like I mentioned earlier, I really like to hike and backpack. And um, that's just something I've been doing for a long time. And finally, 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 just was like, why have I not merged these two things before? And um, so I start, I've, I make um, graphic design. I do graphic designs for all of the, well, not all, but I'm getting there like the national parks out here. So Yosemite and Yellowstone and all that kind of stuff. And, um, started that about a year and a half ago and, and it's, it's, it's going well and I really enjoy it. And I get to do exactly what I want to do and, and make art all day and it rules. <laughs> right. That is awesome. So, but it's funny kind of, how you envision things happening when you're younger mm. versus the reality and sort of like, you know, you you thought you'd be doing drawing and, and you know, I, I don't want to like, I'm not going to call your teacher a jackass, but like, you know, like somebody says something or, you know, kind of turns you off to some, in some way and you go a totally different path. And as you get older, more, more the examination board and I, I, I just i think that there were a few things like a if if i had known and the school had known that i was dyslexic at the time i would have mm, probably sure. had a little bit more um what's the word support um, right for, right for specifically the written work and then i think the outcome would might have been quite different mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure well but like you said here it is come back full circle, you know, right. and right. it's, it's, it, you are doing those things now and exactly. you're creating your own content where, you know, I think that's, no I one, think that's a big, no one can tell me what to do. That's yeah. important. Well, but it, it's also, it's what you're passionate about. It's what ins is inspiring you, which is one of the, you know, I think that's one of the key components to the most important thing. The most important thing, for sure. Right? It's that's that's a big it's a big portion of it. Like if we were to create like <laughs> I'm gonna create these pillars to make other people happy in the tabletop community. What? <laughs> like it doesn't work. It's 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 about sharing your passion and sharing what what's inspired you and what you what you like doing. And then that in turn inspires and you know for, i think getting it, pleasantly surprised when other people like what you're doing yeah it's cool yeah. like but I, I think they're more inclined to like it when you like it exactly you know I mean? 100 like, you're kind of doing something that you're not feeling uh, like that that whatever you want to call it that energy or that vibe when you show it off you're like yeah i did this like yeah versus like hey i made this really cool thing and like other people feel it and pick up on it and yep looks yep. like you're doing something that like everybody scrambles to do what black magic craft is doing. And I, and I think there's a reason for that. You know, he does awesome stuff, but at the end of the day, like you're, you just showed up with something that's new and, and it's exciting. Like yep. new stuff. It's cool. I mean, I'd like that being said, I love Jeremy's channel. Honestly. Yeah. I don't want to sound like I'm crapping on it, but no, not at all. No, it doesn't. But, um, it's just that like, I mean, for instance, like the, the, the paint job that I'm doing, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to, to put a tutorial out on how to paint things, but like I'd say, go to the best, go to these guys that are already doing the tutorials. That's yep. not what I'm doing. I, I, I'm not like, I'm copying these guys. You know? right. I'm not going to plagiarize their work. You know, I mean, I mean, there will be a few bits of plagiarism here and there for sure. Well, um, you steal, you steal from the best. Exactly. You steal from the best and you utilize yeah. it and it's, as long, you know, as long as you're not like, look what I invented. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 exactly. Although, I'm pretty sure you invented dwarven carving into XPS pillars. Well, 
I, I, I certainly haven't plagiarized deliberately, put it that way. Right. So if, if someone else is out, out there has done it, they can let us know. They can let us know. I'd love I'd love to see it. Yep. Great. Yep. Ditto. Um, Show us. Prove us wrong, Tabletop Crafter I'm happy with about on, on my YouTube channel is the... the I, I made a little house and I did this, the, the, the roof in shingles with wood. Individual, in, in, individually placed. That's the shingles. one I was telling you about, Chris. Yep. And, um, you know, like, that doesn't seem like such a stretch of the imagination to go ahead and do that, but it does take time. And, <laughs> and the thing is that people generally in the tabletop crafting community would tend to carve shingles away they do it on black magic craft and um, with xps foam because it does look good um the thing is though that i mean can you look better than real wooden shingles i don't know that's the question so let's see this is the second pillar i've carved but here's one side and then, oh, there's one on the other side, too. Oh, very cool, man. I like that. I like it. Huh? You're going to have to make, like, a spinning column where one is, like, happy and one is sad. <laughs> uh, cool. And then when the adventurers, like, don't solve the riddle, it, it like, it becomes spins around. And, and, like, springs and a bunch of traps. <laughs> yep. That would be a fun one. That would be super fun to, to do. I think that would be hilarious bring out like the the happy and sad face is a great idea that'll have to be it's for sure a build that i do <laughs> I've, been, I've just been um kind of out of the corner of my eye watching the the, the youtube chat that's going on and yep. i'm quite impressed that like people have managed to actually stick around for the entirety of of, of what we've been doing which is really nice well yeah. Like, I, yeah it's it's awesome like you guys all rock for um, uh, ooh, yeah, like, Daniel's, Daniel's suggesting, um, <clears throat> it's, it's awesome that you guys, you know, have stuck around this, this whole time, like, but I feel, again, like, this is a, a unique opportunity to connect with, connect with folks that are in the, you know, in the community, and, uh, this is another thing, too, like, if you guys in the chat have other questions, you can always email the live stream at Crazy Crafter Channel 1983 Gmail before, the live stream with questions throw them in the live stream chat uh, if you have any questions you know i want to do more and more stuff like this where i think next week i'm going to try it and we'll see how it goes but like allow other folks to ch call in to the zoom basically to log in and oh, maybe not necessarily have the video but maybe maybe like come on and chat for a little bit about what their projects are what their build is um but i think that'd be a fun a fun way to set that up and, and, and again incorporate more folks uh, to connect within the community. Daniel in the chat is saying, uh, for the for the uh, smiley face, sad face, one always tells the truth and one always lies. Well, nice, that's pretty dope. Nice, that's a good idea. But you don't that. know which is which. Yeah, you don't know which. Like that's pretty cool. That's uh, that's 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 that DM brain right there at play. Mm -hmm. Oh man. So where are you at with your second carve there, brother? Where are you at? Oh, upside down. <sighs> Dude, he's, he's killing you, Colin. I know. Well, he's it's it's not a contest, Mr. Mr. No, well, and like literally, if I had <laughs> been doing this one week in, I would literally be probably behind where Colin is right now. So that's the truth. <laughs> I love – so I love the, the width of, you know, those – that 20 millimeter, you know. It's 40 millimeters thick every, uh, all the way around. It's it's definitely the way to go. Like my thinner rectangles uh, are are fun and they'll work great for, for for this purpose. But I think the next time I carve one of these up, my next series, I'll, I'll definitely have to glue them together to get that, that wider width and get a, a – It's uh, nice for the look of it but also – just holding it in your hand, yeah, that's the, size, that's the size of your hand, roughly. Like, yep. you know what I mean? It's just comfortable. Yeah, it's better to be comfortable carving something. I think. 
What are you? What have you been painting there, there, uh, Chris? What have you? What are you? Uh, what are you on right now? Well, this was the test that was like kind of a mess, so it looks pretty janky right now. Yep. But um, I was just trying to play around with the wash for base and was like, "Yep, not working." So I kind of just quickly base coated over a lot of that, mm. and then there's this little dwarf that I'm base coating as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that's about it. It's, I mean, like I said, uh, I kind of ended up just pinning Michael's video and like, I'm just sitting here listening to you guys chat about stuff and watching him part away. And, and uh, more people in the chat. Yeah. I kind of want to be watching what you're doing actually. I can't concentrate the same time. <laughs> <laughs> that might that might prove disastrous. Yeah, if I mess up, I get pain on me. If you mess up, you might I don't know lose a finger. Over the summer, um, my mum, like my mum's also an artist. That's one thing to add is that like background is that like all my my mum and my siblings are all quite artistic, and uh, my mum had a Dremel that she used to do etching with that oh. she wasn't using anymore. You know, so you know what Dremel is? Yep. Yep. And um, so she gave that to me in the summer. And with it literally within the first day I chopped off one fingernail like right into the base here. Oh. And, like three days later I was like, okay, I think I know what I did wrong and then three <laughs> days later I did the other one. Oh. <laughs> and, the <little laughs> and, and like, oh the way the little saw blade dug straight in Ouch. So oh. Ouch. Oh. So I keep my my family keep on saying, "Why aren't you wearing gloves?" I I have them sitting here, you know. <laughs> but you know, this is the thing: is when you like control, you know what I mean? Controlling yeah, I the, the the it's important to like feel the dexterity and like to feel the piece, like you're talking about holding it. That's extremely important when you're carving it, like feeling confident. I found myself placing the piece of XPS foam down on the ground and like, or not on the ground, but like on my mat here and then carving down into it to use it as a st more, t like instead of holding it, I found myself stabilizing it uh, on the mat, on the cutting mat and then rotating it. But that's, you know, that's with the Ulfa knife. So it may, it's the, the carving knife is meant to be I think utilized in a better fashion where you're like holding it up in your hand. I think it's oh, better suited it's, for that. It, it, it's really the way it's shaped for your hand is, is perfect. But I was going to say that um, another mistake that I made early on went into carving was that I used to put the the piece on my leg like this. Yo. And I now have a scar on the inside of my thigh where I skipped and went into my thigh with a knife as well. So you have learned the hard way. Ah, oh, yeah. That's my whole entire life, learning the hard way. <laughs> you get there in the end. I'm still standing. Yeah? So it's not all bad? No. <laughs> uh, Daniel's saying he's got to run. Oh, my goodness. I'm, like, knocking over everything here. I'm spilling my water. Um, he's in. He's got to run, but... He said, we're a horrible distraction. He's got a lesson plan to plan, but in the best possible way, we're the best distraction. You got a new subscriber to Nat1 videos oh, there. Thank you very, thank you very there, much. brother. Right uh, on. Yeah. I hope I, li I hope I live up to your expectations. <laughs> <laughs> well, more stuff like, you know, with more stuff like this, like, it's just, there's 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 great content to, to come, especially just starting off only a few months. It's super fun. All right, run this by me one more time, Michael, because I want to try this before uh -huh. before we we uh, we wrap today. I want to carve those those inlets that you're doing right now on the top. So expl run that by me one more time. Okay, so I'm actually about to do one on the top. So okay. If you have a look, I can see. see I can see it. So the first bit is two lines that would be in the center. Yep. Those two lines. Yep. And then little triangles down in like that yep okay then in from the side you're talking about two two millimeters you're going to carve out the rest of that around it so i'll just do it quickly and then you can see what i'm talking about yeah yeah well do it 
<laughs> do it to where you don't slice fingers. <laughs> Although, you're looking pretty comfortable. His cuts and with the knife, if you look at it, Chris, like, it's just, it's smooth. It's a lot smoother than the, it's a lot more rounded. I have, the Ulfa knife tends to yeah. do, like, the harsher cuts. It still you looks cool. It's got tool and it looks pretty sharp. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so can can you now see that? Yes. Yes. So, I've re so basically yep. I've recessed that by about two millimeters. Yep. Okay, now I'm just going to do the exact same thing again. Slightly out around it. Around the triangle. You just do the exact same shape, just wider. Copy that. I'm on it. I'm going to try it. I'm doing it. And then you recess that in exactly the same way. So that one, this this little design, like literally came out of the minds of Mariah the, for for the top of the pillar. Yeah. So, like, I just watched, it, like, I just like looked at that scene and was like, okay, that's what I want to do. You're like, that's what I'm doing. Man, okay, this is gonna be fun. Okay. For those of you that are still I'm here, I'm probably gonna have to. To be honest, um, I, I sort of said to my wife that I will do bedtime tonight, which is pretty much uh, the next no. couple of minutes. Well, gonna we'll wrap up. it. I'm going to try. I'm going to continue to try this, this, and I can post it later. But we can definitely wrap for, for the day. Um, uh, thank you, Michael, for, for joining joining us today on the live yeah, stream. This so was amazing. I really enjoyed it, honestly. Yeah, really man. This is... This has been fantastic, and Chris, thanks for for jumping on and like I'm. It's always nice to have like I liked I liked having having both of you here, and uh, it was it's nice just bouncing bouncing ideas off of off of you guys and and sharing sharing the builds. This was this has been a ton of fun, been a ton of fun. Yeah, and, I agree. And again, thanks for setting it up because I just enjoy being here most yeah. of the time, just listening to people and talk about what they're doing. It's, yep, it's cool. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. Like you, uh, you got, again, learning something new, trying to figure out this, you know, the triangle edging, just trying different stuff today. It's again, always, always learning stuff whenever I get to hang out with you guys. So really appreciate it. Um, anything else that you want to, uh, well, any, uh, the, besides make sure you guys, if you haven't done so head over to Nat one videos and, uh, subscribe, check the check, check out, make sure you stay up to date, uh, on all the, the content that, that Michael's producing over there on his channel. Um, is there anything else you want to plug for that for that channel there, there Michael? Or anything uh, else that you're working on? Not really, no. Okay. I mean, it's, it's all a bit eclectic, you know, so it'll, it'll change uh, as I go. But, yeah, maybe, like, if people want me to do a specific type of thing, I'd like to know what people are enjoying, actually. That's probably a good thing. Yeah, um, same. It'd be nice yeah. to do material. Uh, content that people are enjoying what what kind of content do they enjoy more um because i mean i'm kind of experimenting all the time at the minute just going like well maybe maybe this will be a good idea or right be good. And it'd be nice to have um a bit of feedback on what people are enjoying actually yep yep i couldn't agree more that's that's fantastic um chris anything you want to you want to you, you got to plug no man, this is this is uh, this is your guys' thing. Um, I'm just here for the ride. Here for the ride. I like your shirt. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is uh, this is uh, Chris's design. It's for my uh, weapons theatrical weapons rental company that he he put together for me a couple years back. So how embarrassing! We wore the same thing to 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 the. We should have coordinated. I mean, I feel like you couldn't coordinate any better. This is a good shirt. I like this shirt. I love this shirt. Um, all right. Well, definitely, um, uh, if you guys enjoyed this live stream, be sure to, to hit that like uh, and turn on uh, – subscribe to the channel. Like us. Uh, turn on the bell notification. We're going to be doing this uh, every Sunday. Uh, and, again, like Michael said, interested in what you guys uh, want to see more of. Um, and I'm definitely interested in your builds, like – if you if you're if you're working on something, uh, especially if you try your hand at the dwarven dwarven columns, like find a way to to tag it on the tabletop crafters guild and show show Michael show Michael what you're working on. It's it'd be it'd be awesome to see. 
um, and keep keep your questions coming. Like if anything comes up and you you want to see uh, us address something, you got questions, fire it off in the email, fire it off in the chat, um, and that's what these 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 streams will continue to be. Continue to come together and have some fun, craft, see what we can build in a couple hours. Until then, we'll see you guys uh, next week. I believe, if all goes well, Richard Quiner will be joining us from the RPG Daily next next week. Um, cool. And if not, then maybe it'll it'll be us three again. <laughs> We're all just on your hanging out. Happy Rich to join you if you want. Well, I need uh, I need to run it by my wife. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I think that's like that's like number one. Like I like run it by run it by. Run it by the significant other. Make sure all plans are recording. But I'll keep you guys posted. And uh, we'll see you guys next Sunday. Cool. Yeah, man. Cheers. Nice to meet you, Michael. Yeah, you too, Chris. I'll chat to yeah. you soon. See Bye you later. later.